Hey guys, so today for math, we are going to be talking about bar graphs. And we've talked about bar graphs before, but this time we're going to be talking about bar graphs when you count by twos. Okay, so I have a brain pop for you to watch. I love brain pop. And so I'm excited that we get to take this time to watch them while we're home. And this brain pop is going to be about tally charts and how to take that information and change it to a bar graph. And then you and I are going to do a bar graph You're going to um, that I have here that I've done. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do them and then we're going to do our guided practice together. You will need um, your math lesson 113. You will need a ruler and you will need a pencil and eraser. So if you don't have any of that stuff, pause the video and go grab it and then meet me back here and press play. All right, enjoy your brain pop. here. Well, let's take a survey to find out which one our classmates like best. We can use a tally chart to record data or information. Let's see, Moby likes the Stegosaurus the best. You can draw one tally mark to stand for one vote. Five kids like the Triceratops. So I'll draw five tally marks in that row. One, two, three, four. The fifth mark is drawn across the other four. Well, when you group the tally marks by fives, you can count by fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Sets of fives are easier to count. Hmm. Seven kids like the T-Rex. So, after I draw five tally marks, I can add two more to make seven. Oh, right. I forgot to vote. My favorite dinosaur is the Triceratops. I'll add a tally mark to that row. It's really easy to add to tally charts. Now I can count the votes and use the tally chart to make a bar graph. What is a bar graph? A bar graph is a way to organize and show data. You can write the categories on the bottom. The three dinosaurs are the categories. Then you can write the numbers on the side. The numbers in our bar graph show how many people voted for each dinosaur. Let's see. One student liked the Stegosaurus the best. So I fill in one square. Six people voted for the Triceratops. So I color in six squares. Seven people said the T-Rex was their favorite dinosaur. You can also put the categories on the left and the numbers on the bottom. You can display the same information in a different way so you can understand it better. How can you use bar graphs to understand information? Bar graphs help you answer questions. Which dinosaur did people in our class like the best? Right, the T-Rex is the most popular. Which dinosaur did people like the least? Hmm, the Stegosaurus got five fewer votes than the Triceratops. You can even use the bar graph to figure out the total number of students who voted. Just add the votes from each category. Fourteen kids voted in all. I'm almost done with the survey on where to go for our next class trip. So far, the zoo is the most popular. It has 16 votes. But I don't have 
your vote yet, Moby. Where do you want to go? The moon? I don't think the bus will get us there. All right, now that we're done with our chart and we get the idea how to count by twos and where to put odd numbers in the chart, we're going to start with our um, 113 work. And of course, you do the problem of the day on your own. You can also do the times fives. We should be trying to memorize our times fives. Okay, and then we are going to start our classwork. And of course, you are going to need your ruler. Please make sure you are on the centimeter side. Okay, the smaller side, and it says draw a seven centimeter line segment. So you're going to put your, your pencil right where it starts, and we're going to go to seven. Okay, of course, put your name, and then measure this one. Okay, go ahead and write the date. Remember, if I'm going too fast at all, just hit pause, and when you've caught up, go ahead and hit play again. All right, so we're gonna get the chance to fill in this favorite fruit chart. So it says the children in Miss Infin Infinito's class chose their favorite fruits. Eight children chose bananas, 15 children chose oranges, and seven children chose apples. Color the graph to show how many children chose each type of fruit. Okay, so this time around, we're going to underline the numbers. Okay, the children in Mrs. Infinito's class chose their favorite fruit. Eight children chose bananas, 15 children chose oranges, and seven children chose apples. Color the graph to show how many children chose each type of fruit. Now, you can use pencil or you can use crayon. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, so eight children chose bananas. So we, here's bananas right here. So and eight is on the graph, so we know that we are going to start coloring um, zero to eight. Okay, 15 children chose oranges. There's oranges. Well, 15 is not a number that's on the chart, but we know 15 is between 14 and 16, so this last box you are going to cut that in half. And don't go past that half mark. Okay, so it should only be half of that last box. And seven children chose apples. So seven, again, is not on our chart. So we know that seven comes in between six and eight. I'm going to draw a line. In color. Make sure you don't go past the half mark. Then it says write a question for the graph. Now you can write any question that you have, but it has to do with the amount of fruit that the people have. So my question is going to be, what fruit had the most votes. But you can ask any question you want about this. Okay. All right. Let's look at number two. This is about weight. Think about how much um, you guys weigh when you went to the doctor's last. It says about how much might the lunchbox of a child in your classroom weigh? Now think about a lunchbox. Now some of these are kind of silly um, and we can cross those out. So 200 pounds would be about the size of a daddy. Okay, so we know that our lunch boxes are not heavier than a daddy. Okay, and we know that um, let's see, my dog. My dog weighs about 90 pounds, which is close to 100, and we know that your lunch boxes are a lot lighter than my dog, okay? And I don't know, a kid weighs about 40 pounds, okay? Your lunch box does not weigh more than 40 pounds. So the best answer 
that you would get would be about four pounds. Now sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less if you have thermoses, but four would be your best bet. Okay, let's look here. It says measure each sides of the shape. Now we have our words. Now the one that we know the most is that oblique line, remember? The diagonal line is our oblique, so we'll measure that one first. That one is five centimeters. Now, horizontal, remember we said the horizon where the sun comes up. So that's gonna be this one. So that one's four centimeters. And then, of course, the last one we haven't done is vertical, and that one is three centimeters. All right, so perimeter, they want to know the perimeter. Remember, the perimeter is this side plus this side plus this side. Okay, so, and make sure you label with your CM. So it's going to be three centimeters plus five centimeters plus four centimeters equals, I'll give you a chance. Twelve centimeters. So twelve centimeters is going to be your perimeter. All right, number four. It's dark outside. What time is it? So it is the the hour hand is past the eleven. So we know that the hour is eleven, and we are going to count by fives to figure out the minute hand. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-one, and it is at twenty-two. Now we need to figure out if it's a.m. or p.m. And it gives you a clue right here. It says it's dark outside. Okay, we know that 11.22 a.m. you guys are going to lunch. Because it hasn't hit that 12 p.m. you guys are going to lunch because you go at 11.15. So it's giving us a clue. Is it dark when you go to lunch? No, it's not. So this has to be 11.22 p.m. Okay, we are going to use the Pac-Man to see um, if it's greater than or less than. Remember, the Pac-Man is always hungry, so it's always eating. I'm going to give my guy some teeth. Um, he's always eating the bigger number. So 35 and 53, of course, 53 is the bigger number. Now, for here, if you're like, oh, I don't really know, 37 plus 8 unless I use my fingers, but you can also do your math here. 37 plus 8 and just do the math quickly over here. And then you can write it here. And you don't need to erase this because this is showing me, hey, I'm going to make sure my answer is right and do it on this side. And then 9 times 5 is 45. So they are equal. If you're having trouble, minus 7, this becomes 0, 16, 9. Okay, here they want you to take your numbers from vertical or horizontal and write them vertical. So we're going to write 59 plus 87. And then go ahead and do the math. 9 plus 7 is 16. And 8 plus 5 plus 1 is 14. Okay, this one's subtraction. Make sure you line them all up so that your ones and tens are right on top of each other because then otherwise then it will get confusing. This turns into six because eight is bigger than four. So we're going to borrow one from here so that becomes six and we're going to add that ten to four which is fourteen. Fourteen minus eight is six. Six minus two is four. Okay and the last one 291 plus 487, 7 plus 1 is 8, 9 plus 8 is 17, and then 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 
seven. Okay, very good. And go ahead and work on the back. Good job, guys.